Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this um, eighth presentation in the Sutra study series. So we've been studying the Yoga Sutras for the last year. And now with this presentation and the following presentation, we will wrap it up. And this is a good opportunity to cement your ideas. And also, if you're not exposed to it, it's a great way to give a get an overview of what the Yoga Sutras are all about. And as always, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Jayashree's pristine chanting of the Yoga Sutras. So what I will do in this overview presentation, I will cover the first chapter and a portion of the second chapter. These are the contents. OK, so first we will go and see how the Yoga Sutras are organized. So there are four chapters in the Yoga Sutras. The first is the Samadhi Pada, uh, which is the chapter on Samadhi. Here, Patanjali defines what yoga practice is all about. And then immediately, he goes into advanced states of Samadhi. This chapter is also called the Raja Yoga chapter. Raja Yoga is the Samadhi Yoga, advanced practice. Patanjali defines three types of practices, mridu, madhya, adhimatra. Mridu is mild, madhya is medium, adhimatra. So this is like intense practice for people who are very accomplished. And some people ask, why is Patanjali putting this advanced topic right in the first chapter? Shouldn't he build it up and put it in the end? And one of the reasons given by um, some scholars is that this is for people who are already advanced so that they don't have to read through the other stuff. So he has put it there for that reason. The second chapter is called Sadhana Pada. Sadhana is practice. So it is the chapter on practice. Here, the first portion of the Sadhana Pada is very important. It talks about the foundation for Ashtanga Yoga. Mainly, he talks about the Janma, birth, karma, and the difference between Purusha and Prakriti. And this was also continued in the last the chapter on Kaivalyam. So this is um, the foundation for yoga. Then in the second portion of the Sadhana Pada, he talks about the first five limbs of Ashtanga Yoga. Then comes the third chapter. Third is the Vibhuti Pada. Vibhuti are all the superpowers. It's also called Siddhis. The last um, three limbs of Ashtanga Yoga are on meditation, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. This he covers in the Vibhuti Pada. And then he talks about all these Vibhuti Siddhis from meditation, Pur, walking on water, walking on air, reading others' minds, invisibility, all these things he talks about. This we um, studied uh, a couple of months ago. Then the last chapter is Kaivalya Pada. Kaivalya means loneliness or the separating. So uh, it's there's a Hindi word keval too, but it doesn't it doesn't have the connotation of being aloof, a loner. It just means being able to separate the purusha from the prakriti. Purusha is the atma which is inside. Prakriti is the body and all the material objects. So this chapter is also called the chapter on Janma, Karma, and Moksha, which is the liberation from the cycle of samsara. So this is the organization of the Yoga Sutras. Now, if you see the number of sutras per topic, people typically think that yoga is just asanas, but that is not true. Patanjali has allocated only three sutras to asanas. That's like one and a half percent. There are a total of 195 or 196 sutras. There are six sutras on pranayama. There are seven on Ishvara. So Patanjali does give a lot of importance to Ishvara. There are 16 on yama and niyamas. Yama and niyamas are the foundation for yoga. There are 76 on meditation, and the rest 88 on purusha, prakriti, karma, all these things. So one of the um, things to note about studying the sutras, um, so there are, I've put here some guidelines which I've taken from 
um, scholars. The idea is to study with the heart and not the brain, because the brain can weave its own stories and create confusion. Whereas the body, when you absorb things with the body, the body doesn't lie. So it is a much better way to study. And the study of these texts should feel you leaving light and free, not heavy and knotted. So these are some of these things to understand when studying the sutras. If we go just by uh, logic and say, where is the Atma? There's no physical evidence, then it's going to leave you with knotted. So you can click on this link to read more about um, the guidelines. Now, what are the sutras? So you, the Yoga Sutras are a little challenging to understand. And there's a reason why the sutras are done this way. A sutra can be looked up as a scientific treatise with a minimum number of words conveying an entire a, a, a big philosophy with very few words. So it's a, a memory aid. It's a mnemonic so that people can remember and if they know, they can understand what all those uh, concise, uh, terse words are. So the ca characteristics are few words, alpa aksharam, unambiguous, asandigdam, without doubt, captures the essence, saravat, sar means essence. It has to be a comprehensive presentation. Vishvato mukam, just very, vishva is like universal, giant. Mukhamma's face, it's all face looking everywhere. Astobam, no fillers. Anavadyam, it's irrefutable. It has to stand on its own ground. So these are the characteristics of the sutras. Now, the contents of the Samadhi Pada are as follows. Patanjali first defines yoga. He talks about the vrittis of the mind. Vrittis are the activities. It has a turbulent connotation. Vritti the, just the Sanskrit word, it, it just means a connotation of turbulence. Then he gives about the details of the practice, mild, medium, and intense that we saw. He then talks about the concept of Ishvara. There's like seven sutras for that. He then talks about obstacles to the practice. There is, um, he talks about Vyadis, Dhyana, Samshaya, all that uh, we'll see. Then he says to um, remove all these obstacles, the best way is meditation. That's how he introduces meditation. He says, focus on a single object is the best way to end all these kleshas, these obstacles to the mind. And he talks about 10 ways to meditate. And then he goes into these various states of samadhi. OK, any questions so far? All good? OK. OK, now we will look at the first sutra. So I put this uh, box here, which means we will. this will be a full line. We will chant it as such. If it's broken into multiple boxes, I will first repeat the first box. I'll tell the first box, you repeat. Second box, you repeat, so on. So yoga is defined as chitta vritti nirodaha. Chitta is the mind. Vrittis are these turbulent activities. See this connotation of turbulence. Nirodaha means just, it's a strong word. It means just wiping out. Let's listen to the sutra. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Could you hear the sutra? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Now, I will first tell it. And you can repeat after me. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Great. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Others can join in too next time. Okay. What happens when the vrittis cease? Patanjali says, Tada drashtuhu, drashta is the seer, which is the atma. It resides in its own true nature. Self, swarupa means self 
form rupa is form swa means self since own true nature avasthanam means it just resides will come to what the swarupa is tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam so i will first tell the first box you repeat after me tada drashtu hu tada drashtu hu swarupe avasthanam sa तदाद्रष्टु टुगेदर तदाद्रष्टु वरुपे वस्तानम वरुपे वस्तानम गुड ओके सो द ट्रू नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ इज हैप्पीनेस एंड नॉलेज jnana and ananda this is not told in the yoga sutras but that is the general interpretation there is also a, a chant which goes jnana ananda mayam devam nirmala spatika kritam adaram sarva vijnanam hay grivo upasmahe so both atma and the jiva atma and the paramatma they all, both have the quality of knowledge and happiness the atma the, uh, the purusha is supposed to be pure drashta drishi matraha shuddho api pratye anupashya it's very pure but because of all this mind it gets confused okay now we come to this concept called pratyaya which is the screen of the mind it is like this reflection that's happening so in this screen so remember we have this in the mind there's this images which come there are sounds that come right that is called patanjali calls it pratyaya so in the pratyaya constantly images are being play, uh, played so there is you uh, it's could be what you are seeing directly it could be imagination that's why patanjali vritti he talks about pramana uh, vikalpa viparyaya nidra smritaya in the sleep also you have images um, smriti memory you recollect all that stuff so here there's all kinds of activity but in some corner you see the reflection of the self which is usually obscured by all the other activities that are going on the prakriti prakriti so in the screen of the mind which is the reflection in the lake let's say the purusha often gets obscured when you do the yoga practice what comes out very clearly is the purusha so this is what happens in the end in fact so this is a very important sutra when i first listened to the sutra i was just mesmerized tada drashtuhu swarupe vasthanam and in the end of the yoga sutras the last sutra 34th sutra in the fourth chapter patanjali says purushartha shunyanam gunanam pratiprasava kaivalyam swarupa pratishtavachiti shakti riti so what he says is after the purpose to the purusha having ended the gunas they recede into the prakriti and then there is liberation or he says in other words swarupa which is the true form pratishta which is reside chiti shakti means the power of consciousness what's the power of consciousness he is referring to the purusha so the purusha resides in its own true form so what it is is you will see only the reflection of the purusha in that mind screen so that is the um swarupe avasthana and what happens when the vrittis don't cease vritti sarupyam itaratra the seer identifies with the vrittis of the mind it causes imprints on the mind that is a samskaras let's play this sutra vritti sarupya mitaratra okay so i will tell this and you can repeat after me vritti sarupya mitaratra 
Itaratra means otherwise. Yeah. Okay, so now Patanjali goes in to define what a yoga practice is. He defines the yoga practice as follows Abhyasa Vairagya Pyam Tan Nirodha. The state of Nirodha, yoga is Chitta Vritti Nirodha. How do you get the state of Nirodha, this wiping out of all these vrittis? By Abhyasa, which is practice, and Vairagya, which is dispassion. So it is only, and he uses the word Byam. It's only by both you can get to the, uh, you can do, uh, do the yoga practice to attain the state of Chitta Vritti Nirodha. So I will repeat first, or first let's listen to Jayashree. Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tannirodha Okay, I will chant. Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tannirodha Tannirodha Good. Okay, so there are two components to the yoga practice, Abhyasa and Vairagya. So here he defines what Abhyasa is. So the practice is, he says, That state in which you are able to remain steady, that effort which results in steadiness of the mind and the body is called Abhyasa. So I will chant first. Tatrastito. Ito. Yetno Bhyasa. Yetno Bhyasa. Tatrastito. Yetno Bhyasa. Good. Okay. The next part is Vairagya. And this is actually a very beautiful sutra. He, Patanjali says, Drishtanushravika Vishaya Vitrishnasya Vashikara Samya Vairagyam. So he says, Drishta Vishaya. Drishta Vishaya are seen objects. Anushravika Vishaya, heard or revealed objects like heaven, all these things. Vitrishnasya of one who has lost thirst, Trishna's thirst in all, both the seen objects and heard or revealed objects. That Mastery, Vashikara Samya, is called Vairagyam. Vairagyam is the mastery over consciousness of one who has lost thirst in both perceived and revealed objects. Let's also listen to um, Jay Shri's chant. Drishtanushravika Vishaya Vitrishnasya Vashikara Sanya Vairagyam. So I'll probably skip um, um, the uh, repeat because it's a long sutra. But if you want, you can let me know. I, I can help you chant. OK, so um, Patanjali has defined the yoga practice. And he now um, he talks about um, this practice, how to achieve the state of Nirodha. And he also says, so the, he, before this, I think he introduces the, the Samadhi. And he says this Nirodha and Samadhi can also be attained by dedicated devotion to an entity called Ishwara. So Ishwara is a very important concept in 
yoga for, for Patanjali. It says, Ishwara Pranidana Tva. So by surrender to this entity called Ishwara, one can attain Samadhi and Chitta Vritti. So do you want to chant? I'll first chant and you can chant after me. Ishwara Pranidana Tva. Ishwara Pranidha Nadva. Yeah. Ishwara Pranidha Okay. And Patanjali says, he introduces meditation at this point. He says, why this all this klesha, the vrittis? I, I hadn't gone into details on the vrittis, but he talks about five vrittis. Vrittaya, panchataya, klushta, aklushta. Have the, there can be harmful or not harmful. So, and he talks about pramana, vikalpa, viparyaya, nidra, smrtaya. Pramana is direct perception. What is there? Exactly like that. Then uh, vikalpa. Uh, Viparya, Viparyaya is myth, Vikalpa is Vastu Shunyo Vikalpa. He says it's uh, wrong knowledge, false, it's like it, it's, it has uh, it's no object in mind. And that's how Patanjali says that then Nidra is sleep and Smriti is memory. So these are the ones which create activities in the mind. These are the five things. So he says, the practice of concentration on a single object is the best way to remove the obstacles of the mind. This is how he introduces meditation. Tat pratishedatam ekatatva vyasaha. Let's listen to Jayashri here. Tat pratishedhartam ekatatva vyasaha. Okay. So, um, Pratisheda is removal. Artam is the purpose. So the Pratisheda Artam Eka Tattva is um, the, the one-pointed mind is, is the best way to remove the obstacles of the mind. And Patanjali also talks about a lot of obstacles. I've uh, not gone into uh, detail here, but um, he talks about Duk, um, Vyadis, Tyana, uh, Samshaya, Pramadala, Avirati, Branti Darshana, Alabda Bhumi, Katva, Anavasta Tattva, all these Chitta Vikshepa, Antaraya, these are the obstacles. Vyadis, disease, Tyanas, dullness, uh, Samshaya is doubt, Pramada, carelessness, Avirati is sensuality, Branti Darshana, false perception, all this. And he says, they don't come alone. But um, it comes with dukkha, daurmanasya, angame jayatva, shwasha, prashwasha, vikshepa, sahabhavaha. They have their, all these uh, obstacles are accompanied with certain symptoms in, in the mind and the body. Dukkha is sorrow. That's the origin for sorrow because of all these kleshas. Daurmanasya is uh, uh, down mind. Angame jayatva, trembling of the limbs. Shwasha, prashwasha, vikshepa, your breathing. Shwasha is inhalation, prashwasha. Exhalation, vikshepa, it becomes um, improper, like a very shallow, short breaths. Vikshepa, these are the sahabhavaha. Sahabhavaha means they are accompaniments to all these obstacles. These are the symptoms in the body. Now, Patanjali talks about nine different ways to meditate. And um, in the end, he also says, if none of these work, whatever gives you a steady state, that is an acceptable form of meditation. Okay, This is one of the most beautiful sutras in the Yoga Sutras. The first way to meditate is towards attitude towards people. In Buddhism, there is something called metta meditation that comes from Maitreya. Maitreya is friendliness. So it's called loving kindness meditation. That is from this. So people are the greatest triggers in our lives. So that's why Patanjali says, meditating with an attitude towards the people is the first uh, type of meditation. And he says, Maitri karuna mudito pekshanam 
ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪುಣ್ಯ ವಿಷಯಾತಿತ್ತ ಪ್ರಸಾದನ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರೋಕನ್ ಸೊ ಮೈ ಥ್ರೀ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸುಖ ಆರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಲಿನೆಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ Karuna, compassion towards those who are suffering, who have dukkha. Mudita is delight towards the punya, virtuous people. Teksha is indifference towards the unvirtuous people. And by this, one attains undisturbed calmness of the mind. Chitta prasadhanam, by cultivating or bhavana's cultivation of these attributes. Let's also listen to Jayashree. ಮೈತ್ರೀ ಕರುಣ ಮುದಿತೋಪೇಕ್ಷಾ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪುಣ್ಯ ವಿಷಯಾತಿತ್ತ ಪ್ರಸಾದನ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಚಾಂಟ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಯು ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಕಿಪ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ನೋ okay so otherwise we go into the next one here at the, so he def, uh, tells about nine ways through the breath prachardana vidarana abhyam va pranasya by ex- long exhalation you get into a meditative state and he talks about swapnanidra nyana lambanam va by using sleep as a support um, your um, you you're going into this uh, state in your dreams they they call um, um uh, uh, dreams can reveal your subconscious so lucid dreaming they call it using that to meditate um and he talks about different things finally he says yatapi matadhyanatva whatever means yatapi what by whatever means uh, mata by means dhyanatva so meditate by whatever means possible and that's because patanjali knows each individual is unique so what works for one may not work for the other this is the importance patanjali lays on the need to have a calm focused mind at all times so they say idle brain is a devil's workshop right so if your mind is focused then you won't have all these sorrow all these problems that's what patanjali says so let's this is a short sutra we can i broke it up into two parts so i think we can chant this i will first lead then you chant after me yatha pi mata yatha pi mata dhyana dva dhyana dva so together let's chant the full thing yatha pi mata dhyana dva okay good now patanjali goes so i i told you the first portion is about the yoga practice so he builds it up to why we need to meditate so the yoga sutras is all about meditation in fact in vyasa's commentary on the yoga sutras the first sutra says yoga is samadhi yoga samadhi hi so yoga samadhi so yoga sutras Uh, so meditation is the most important thing so patanjali has built it up till now to why we need to meditate and now he goes into the samadhi this is the most advanced state of meditation and different levels of samadhi samadhi is meditative absorption when you meditate you start off with focus on an object and uh, you mind tends to wander you bring the mind back wanders bring it back then in the second st- there is the dharana the second stage called dhyana it's able to seamlessly rest on the object it can be a breath it can be a sensation in your body and in the third state of samadhi you just get absorbed in yourself the um, analogy is when you sit in a hot tub your body feels like melting your mind is very calm there's nothing you're just engrossed in these feelings that is meditative absorption and it comes close of course you don't have feel the hot water it's coming from internally so the patanjali talks about 
two type broadly he talks about two types of samadhi um, in the beginning then there's a third state uh, very advanced state he'll talk about that too so first is sampragnata samadhi second is a sampragnata samadhi pragna is is wisdom um here sampragna means with um the no or let's say some uh, pragna is knowledge it is it means some pragna means with the knowledge of something so what are those some things vitarka vichara ananda asmita so the sutra goes like this vitarka vichara ananda asmita gunamat sampragnyataha vitarka form so the vitarka rupa means gross or physical form vichara rupa means subtle form vichara could also mean investigation which means there's something very subtle it's not so obvious so that you have to investigate um ananda rupa is form of bliss asmita rupa form of ainas now you would ask why would one want to meditate on ego smita because that is so you learn to separate the purusha from the prakriti in fact Mar ramana maharishi would always say who are you that's uh, meditate on the i because once you start looking deeper then you would realize that the body is not the atma so that is the sampragnata samadhi vitarka vicharananda smita rupanugamat sampragnata so there's extra word rupa which is th not there in this text but uh, in jayashree's text it has so every one of this has a rupa a form the second one is a sampragnata samadhi so this is without um, uh, an object to focus on the asampragnata samadhi is cultivated by practicing cessation on the images and the sounds in the mind and what only remains is the previous samskaras the imprints so the screen of the mind um it stops playing these images and sounds and it becomes very still and what is felt apparently is only the samskaras so this is the advanced stage sampragnata is less advanced this is more advanced and even in samadhi there are multiple uh, stages and then patanjali goes into so the for the previous state the sampragnata samadhi so the uh, savitarka nirvitarka without a gross form with the gross form uh, savichara nirvichara so he goes he says etc which means each of this can be divided into two classes initially savitarka with the gross form then you kind of you don't need the gross form you get into something a little better so that's how it progresses and finally this is a very powerful uh, state this is a very powerful sutra here in this state he talks about nirbija samadhi bija is seed nirbija means without a seed samadhi so this is how the sutra goes i don't have jayashree's chant here but sutra goes like this tasya pi nirode sarva nirodan nirbija samadhi what it means is oh, we are using all these instruments let's say we are using brooms to clean the mind and these are all the lower states of samadhi now when, when the instruments used to wipe out all the perturbations of the mind all these brooms they are also swept out by another master broom which is formless that is called nirbija samadhi he, without a seed so you use all these techniques like vitarka subtle form gross form all these your uh, samskaras all those are instruments to bring your mind to settle down even those are swept out by this state nirbija samadhi without a seed there's no, no object 
it's you're not using any object to get into your own state you it's just it's like shunya in uh, buddhism it is the very powerful state any questions so far would nirbija also imply without any um karmic residue or samskaras generated yeah yeah so all those are swept out too that's what patanjali says in the asampragnata samadhi there's like karmic you start feeling the karmic residues and you were trying to meditate on that um apparently in this nirbija samadhi is nothing huge it's just on its own without a seed nirbija literally means without a seed bija seed okay so we've finished um, the first uh, chapter uh, so no questions huh? here okay so then um, i will yeah sorry um, i have a question uh huh may i may i take you back please when we when we started to look at the slides uh, in regards to meditation when when you started um something i didn't uh, quite understand is you mentioned patanjali had mentioned five um i don't know if you call Mithis. them obstacles oh, that, that you yeah that we come across that stops us from meditating would you mind repeating that okay so those are vrittis activities of vrittis. the mind yeah yes. Pat patanjali i because i we didn't we don't have time i didn't cover that he says vrittaya panchataya klishta klishta vrittis the activities of the mind which cause a little bit of turbulence they are panchataya have five types klishta right. a klishta so klishta means causing harm a klishta means not causing harm those are pramana vikalpa viparyaya nidra smritaya these are the five things which cause these turbulent activities in the mind and what the prama it the tur turbulent it just a lot of activity pramana is direct perception when you see something the in the in the mind screen there's something formed and then he talks about viparyaya um it's myth it's not there your mind is just concocting its own stuff uh viparyayo mithyatnyanam myth so myth is the same uh, root in sanskrit and english then vikalpa shabda gnana anupati vastu shunyo vikalpa so um from sounds and all this you create your own idea of something and that is vikalpa and then um nidra in sleep dreams you have things played in the mind uh, yeah. and smriti yeah. you recollect from past so these the are past, the five yes. things yeah which uh, which um, cause your screen play in the mind so i told you about pratyaya this big screen and in this screen all these images and sounds that's what causes the mind to get restless and our entire aim is to quieten that so eventually you only see the self in that uh, understood thank yeah. you yeah would the aklishta um clash or vertis be um something like meditations it's whatever decreases the activity of the mind yeah so um meditation is a process so aklishta vrittis generally the if you look at the commentators they'll say um pramana is a aklishta vritti uh, nidra is a, a, it depends pramana is definitely a aklishta nidra as long as you don't get nightmares that, that's also okay because nightmares create a lot of turbulence um then um memory if it's a good memory it could be aklishta um but he doesn't say it's a um, suklishta it <laughs> or a uh, sukavritti there's nothing like this there is this bad and not bad but the not bad also we have to remove right thanks mm -hmm. okay so okay now we've um, covered the first chapter then we will go and um see the second chapter and if you have questions feel free to interrupt so we're not doing a lot of chanting so we have some time
um, now we'll look into the second chapter. What are the contents? The first one is the foundation for Ashtanga Yoga. So Patanjali, in the second chapter, the most famous thing of Patanjali is the Ashtavanga, I mean, eight limbs. Anga is um, parts or limbs. Ashtanga means eight limbs of yoga. So the foundation for Ashtanga Yoga is the first portion. And then he goes into the five of the eight limbs of yoga. Now, in the beginning, Patanjali, he talks about three types of practices. Mridumadhyadi, Matratva, Tatopi, Visheshaha. Vishesha means types. So three types, my, uh, mild, medium, and extreme. So extreme is this intense meditation. That is what is in the first chapter called Raja Yoga. This chapter is called Chapter on Samadhi Pada is also called the chapter on Raja Yoga. The uh, royal path to uh, liberation is through uh, deep Samadhi. Then there is a medium path, which is building up this Ashtavangani, the eight limbs. It is still not um, all the Samadhi that uh, will happen. The initial stages, they are not as powerful as the Nirbija Samahadi, and Patanjali emphasizes that in the third chapter. Tatapi Bahirangam Nirbijasya, all these samadhis that and the, the Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi, these are all still look like they're external compared to the Nirbija Samadhi. So the and the final one is the mild practice. That is the practice for the householders, people like us. He defines three components. This is called Kriya Yoga. And we'll see what those three are. Then he talks about the five, um, uh, the, the kleshas, the different kleshas in the body and the mind. Then the most important thing is he talks about karma. So um, the last chapter is a chapter on Janma, karma, and moksha. So here, this it's tied to the last chapter. He describes this janma, karma. That is how karma continues across lifetimes. And then, very importantly, he defines purusha. He defines prakriti. He defines their interplay, the conundrum of this. Because the, for the purusha to get liberated, it needs a body. So the purpose of the body, Pratanjali defines, is, is to provide Boga pavargatam drishyam boga, which is enjoyment. Um, it is uh, experience, enjoyment, experience for the purusha. And apavargatam for the purpose of apavarga means liberation. It's the body has two uses for experience and for liberation. So only with a body, the purusha can get liberated. But when it comes into the body, it starts, Purusha gets confused because of all the vrittis. It starts thinking, I am the body. And that is the biggest problem. So the moment you see the body and the Purusha are different, you are getting towards liberation. So that's what it says. Then the uh, second part of the uh, Sadhana Pada is on the first five of the eight limbs of yoga, Ashtavagani. OK, so the kleshas are. Um, the imperfections, they cause the misidentification. So the essence of the sadhana pada is this, at least the first portion of the sadhana pada. Second is how to um, get rid of all these kleshas. That he gives a prescription. You do asanas, you do pranayama, you observe tapas, then you uh, get over these kleshas. OK. So essence of the Sadhana Pada is the Sutra. I will chant the Sutra. Drashtu Drishyayo Sangyogo Heya Hetuhu. Trashta is the seer, which is the Purusha. Drishyam is the scene. Trashta Drishyam. Sangyogo, when, they, uh, when you think they are the same, Sangyogo is coming together. Heya Hetuhu the cause of the avoidable suffering. So the cause of the avoidable suffering is the identification of the drashta, which is the purusha, with the drishyam, which is the scene. This is the most important um, concept in the second chapter and in, in general in the Yoga Sutras. This is the biggest problem because 
the bo- uh, purusha starts thinking because of all the vrittis that it is the body any questions here okay so oh this, uh, sorry i have a question yeah so, say the body you also mean the mind too um okay so uh, i will clarify that here so when the purusha uh, comes into contact with the body there is a temporary entity formed called the mind patanjali does not define mind as prakriti he defines mind uh, prakriti as body he insists senses objects in the world other bodies all these are prakriti mind is a temporary because after the purusha departs um you still have the body i mean the senses they're still um i think if you the light the retina uh, the image will fall but the mind is absent to do anything with that so the mind is the temporary entity which is formed when the purusha and prakriti come together okay is that clarify um but isn't the mind an evolute of prakriti um Patanjali doesn't in the definition of prakriti he doesn't say that that the mind it it just mind just happens when the purusha and the prakriti come together that is the general understanding though patanjali doesn't um explicitly state that so you can say it's a evolute of prakriti when the purusha comes into contact with it do you have more questions no thank you okay okay what causes this wrong identification that purusha and prakriti are the same so patanjali says this is klesha klesha uh, let me ch- chant the sutra first this is a very beautiful sutra klesha mula karma shayo drishta drishta janma vedaniya klesha mula ha kleshas are the root cause mula is root cause mula is just root klesha mula means root cause are the kleshas um and what do they cause they cause karma shaya ha left over desires and what it does is it results in experiences in drishta adrishta janma vedanaiha so drishta is seen which is in this lifetime adrishta is not seen which is in future lifetimes janma vedanaiha life experiences vedana is experiences so the kleshas are the root which cause this leftover desires because of this leftover desires karma ashaya karma and the leftover desires it prompts the need for the purusha to take other bodies and continue the life the births so and it results in experiences in this or other lifetimes so the karma ashaya the, the bundle of karmas they cause experiences in drishta adrishta janmas and how can we eliminate the kleshas and patanjali says by the practice of the limbs of yoga the impurities are destroyed the lamp of wisdom is left lit and it leads to discriminative direct knowledge let me chant the sutra first yogaanushtanad ashuddikshaye jnana deetir avivekakyate yoga anga anushtanat anushtanam practice yoga anga by the li- practice of the limbs of yoga ashuddikshaye ashuddi means impurities shayas destroyed jnana deetihi the lamp of wisdom jnana is wisdom deepti deepas lamp the lamp of wisdom is lit and aviveka kyate so a means negation 
A means great. So A Viveka Kyate means great discriminative direct knowledge. It's just discriminative awareness that is obtained by the practice of the limbs of yoga. Now, Patanjali says this kleshas, they can be in their uh, small form, it can be easily destroyed. But when their kleshas become strong in their active form, you need like uh, heavy duty things to remove the kleshas. And that heavy duty thing is dhyana. Dhyana heyas tat prithayaha. Let's listen to Jayashri. Dhyana heyas tat prithayaha. Shall we chant this one? This is an important sutra. I will chant first, then you can chant after me. Dhyana heyas tat prithayaha. Dhyana he yas tad Dhyana he yas tad Dhyana he yas tad Okay. All right. So now we go into karma. So we, we saw all this um, vrittis, the kleshas, how they cause the wrong identification. And we'll go into the portion on karma. This is actually considered by many scholars as an important sutra. It talks about um, the discernment of suffering by the wise. Now the wise people, they know that even the Buddha had all the luxuries, everything. In spite of that, he was unhappy because he's suffering in the world. So the Vivekan, one with discernment, for them, everything is suffering, even the klada, the pleasure of good birth, long life, and great life experiences. So the sutra goes as, Parinama tapa samskara dukkai gunavritti virodacha Dukkameva sarvam vivekinaha. Dukkameva sarvam. All this is only suffering. Sarvam everything. Dukkameva means so all this is only suffering. Vivekinaha for the wise, the discern, people with discernment, they see through all this. So what they want is the ultimate relief from the cycle of births. That is through Kaivalyam. Let's listen to Jayashri. Parinama tapa samskara dukhair gunavritti virodhacha dukhameva sarvam vivekinaha. Okay. Now, um, the three types of suffering, they are brought about by Parinama dukkha the suffering after an action on experience, tapa dukkha, the thirsting, the suffering of expectation, and samskara dukkha, the suffering due to lingering imprints, which is kind of, we want something, it's our inclination is to get something, that is all from the samskara, samskara dukkha. So he, Patanjali defines three types of dukkha. Now, the, there are three types of karmas, which is well known, prarabdha karma, agami karma, and sanchita karma. There's a beautiful talk by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. It's worth listening to it. Ravi Shankar there says, prarabdha karma, it's in this link here. Prarabdha karma is what we've done in past life, which has started fruition in this lifetime. This is very difficult to avoid. We have to go through with this. Agami karma is karma if, which we've done in the past or in this lifetime, which has not come to fruition. And this, there is a chance to avoid this if you do the right things. Then Sanchita karma, karma of the future, which is triggered by our latent impressions. This definitely we have a good control over to remove. 
So these cause the Parinama Dukkha, Tapa Dukkha, and Samskara Dukkha. Any questions so far? No? Do, um, do you guys need, um, so we have about another um, 13 or 14 slides. Do you guys want a few few minutes break, water break or anything before we continue? Hmm? Any? You're OK? Yep. OK. Others are OK too? Or do you want a break? You'll be OK. Yeah, you're OK. OK, great. Let me just take some water. OK, now comes the very important part of Purusha and the Prakriti. We saw this sutra before. Drashtudrishyayo sanyogo heya hetuhu. The cause of the avoidable suffering is the identification of the Purusha with the Prakriti. Prakriti is the body, Purusha is the indweller, the Atma. And we also saw this pratyaya, the screen of the mind, right? The purusha apparently only sees the screen of the mind. Drashta drishimatraha. So he just sees the screen of the mind. And the purusha, by its nature, is very pure. But because all this nonsense gets played on the screen of the mind, it leaves imprints on the purusha. So this is the sutra. Drashta drishimatraha shuddopi pratyayanupashyaha. Drashta has the, only the power of seeing, and it keeps seeing this pratyaya, the screen of the mind. Even though it is pure, shuddo api, it is very pure by its own nature, it sees all these nonsense images which are played on the screen of the mind. Pratyaya anupashyaha. Pashyati means see. Anupashyati is like accentuated. It just it just follows the screen of the mind. It just keeps seeing that. And because of that, the imprints are formed. Let's listen to Jayashri. Drashta drishimatra shuddhopi pratyaya anupashyaha. This is the nature of the Purusha. It is pure and it only has the power of seeing. And I don't have the, um, yeah, the Prakriti has only one purpose. So the Prakriti is basically, he, Patanjali says, it consists of the senses and the matters, um, and the matter. And it has only one purpose. Tadartha eva drishyasya atma. So it, its purpose is to provide um, experience and liberation to the Purusha. Tadartha eva drishyasya atma. Okay. Um, I don't have that um, slide, but yeah. Um, as I said, um, um, Boga apavar gartam trishyam. So its purpose is to um, provide experience and liberation to the Purusha. Now there is a conundrum. Um, uh, we've covered that before. Um, there's also an article. Um, let me go to this. So the Purusha and the Prakriti, let me pull that article. I thought it would be worthwhile to go over that. Um, the Purusha and the Prakriti, when they come together, it's from confusion. And once that um, confusion is gone, there is liberation. OK. All right. So this is called the Purusha Prakriti conundrum. Um, the, 
Drash, we saw that the, when the drashta and drishyam when they come together, it's the, uh, the cause of the avoid, the identification is the cause of the avoidable suffering, and Patanjali also defines the um, prakriti as prakasha kriya stuti shilam bhute indriyatmakam bhoga apavargartham drishyam. The prakriti has three qualities. It has the gunas, sattvarajas, and tamas. He defines it as prakasha, which is light. Kriya, action, that is rajas, stiti, inertia, that is tamas. And it also has the bhutas, the elements of matter, and the, that is air, water, um, solid uh, form, and also the indriyas, the senses. So this is how he defines prakriti, but he doesn't include the chitta here. Um, indriyas he includes. And its purpose is to provide experience and liberation to the purusha and patanjali says that swaswami shaktyo swarupo palabdihetu samyoga understanding of the power of the purusha and the prakriti is only known through their union but each cannot act independently and each doesn't have any power um, but however tasya hetuhu this union is from uh, avidya, right knowledge. So at some point, the Purusha realizes, how did I start identifying with you? It's because of ignorance. When um, this ignorance is removed, um, the union is absent and there is Kaivalyam, liberation. So that is what Patanjali says. Okay, now the, la the next portion of the second chapter is the eight limbs of yoga, Ashtavangani. So this is a famous sutra. It uh, Maybe we can chant this. So let's hear Jai Shri first. Yamani Yamasana Pranayama Pratyahara Dharana Dhyana Samadha Yoshtavangani Shall we chant this one? I'll first chant. Yamani Yamasana Yamani Yamasana Pranayama Pratyahara Pratyahara Dharana Dharana Dhyana Samadayor Dhyana Samadayor Ashtavangani Ashtavangani Okay, we will chant together. Yamani Yamasana Pranayama Pratyahara Dharana Yana Samada Yorashta Vangani. Good. So this is a Ashtavangani, the eight limbs of yoga. What first part is the Bahiranga Sadhana, external practices. These are Yama, Niyama, Asana, and Pranayama. Yama is restraint. Yama, literally Yama means to rain, bridle. That's what Yama means. Niyama is observances. Asana is posture, we know. Pranayama. Pranayama doesn't mean Pranayama. It's not that. It'll then be Pranayama. But it's Pranayama, which is Prana plus Ayama. Ayama means extension. It is extension of the prana through breathing exercises. That's what it means. These Patanjali calls Bahiranga Sadhana. Then comes the transition limb from Bahiranga to Antaranga, internal. This is Pratyahara. It means Prati plus Ahara. Ahara is food. Prati means removing or weaning of the food so it is weaning away of the food for the senses when you're 
looking outside to, you're bringing, you're going into meditation. That is called Pratyahara. In um, asana practice, there is this Kurmasana and Supta Kurmasana. So Kurmasana is tortoise. So there is always this example of the Kurma Angani Eva that in Bhagavad Gita also it comes. You are withdrawing your senses inward. So the um, Kurmasana to Supta Kurmasana, Supta Kurmasana is like a tortoise which has withdrawn its limbs like that. You are going inward and you are not getting stimulated by um, external things. The Antaranga Sadhana. So these are the internal practices. This is dharana, focus, dhyana, continued in uninterrupted focus, and samadhi, state where the object and the subject become one. You are just self-engrossed. This is the antaranga sadhana. So that is some references here, and that brings us to the end of the first overview. So in the next overview, we will look into these Ashtavangani, we'll look into the Siddhis and the Kaivalyam, those three. So we'll just look at some of the important sutras. Are there any questions? I'm going to stop the recording now. Will you be sharing the extra slides that you showed us earlier?